Hi guys and welcome to a new video, thank you for joining me as always. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. If you click the alarm bell, you'll get notifications when I post new videos. And if you enjoy the content, please give this video a thumbs up and feel free to share it with your friends. In part one, we looked at what a hot water chlorifier is, how they work, and we built our own using a stainless steel beer keg for under £100. So it's a very budget-friendly option for building a hot water system for your van and it uses the waste heat energy from your van's engine to heat the hot water so it's a very cost effective way to heat water in a van if you do a lot of touring around. It's not so good for static camping because you'd have to start your engine every time you want hot water but I'm looking at options for that so like I said subscribe to the channel click the alarm bell and that way you'll get updated when I post new videos about that subject. So part one I showed you how to build the beer keg chlorifier in part two I showed you how to install it in the van and connect up your primary hoses and we gave it a little test and I can tell you now that it does work so you wouldn't be wasting your time if you wanted to watch the longer part one video. It's about half an hour but I wanted to make sure it covered everything. In this week's video I'm going to be giving the beer keg chlorifier a thorough test. My plan for this video is to cook up the chlorifier to its maximum operating temperature and then I'm going to be monitoring the temperature over a period of time to see how long it stays hot for. I'm going to be using a data logger inside the chlorifier's insulation to record the temperature uh, at regular intervals throughout this test and then we'll be able to see how long we're going to have usable hot water for. So in a nutshell we should be able to see how quickly we can cook the water up inside the chlorifier, what temperature we can achieve as a maximum temperature and then how long we've got usable hot water for. And I'll be plotting all that data on a graph so we can see. We're in November now so the outside air temperatures uh, getting much colder so the system won't be as efficient as it will be in the summer because you'll have more heat losses. I've got this last little bit of pipe work in the engine bay to insulate. A couple of good things about using the pipe insulation. First of all, obviously you're reducing the heat loss from the hoses, so your primary coil should be more efficient at heating the water. And another good thing about the pipe insulation is that it should give the pipe work a little bit of protection. Um, obviously with the vibrations of the engine, you don't want all this rubbing against anything because it's going to cause damage over time. The data loggers I'm going to be using they record the temperature and humidity so I've just put a couple of new batteries in them and we're going to go about programming these let's plug our data loggers into the laptop this is a Windows 7 laptop because that's what the software requires my first data logger will be recording the ambient temperature inside the van so I've called this one ambient temperature I've set the temperature scale to degrees Celsius and now we just need to decide on how frequently we want a temperature to be logged so I've set it to every 20 seconds and that should give us three and a half days worth of data to look at I don't predict that the water is still going to be hot after three and a half days, but you never know, our insulation may be that good, in which case we'll have to redo this test with a less frequent interval. I set the data logger up to start recording automatically at 5am in the morning, and that will allow us to get it in position and it can acclimatise before it starts the test. I set up the other data logger in exactly the same way, except I call this one chlorifier temperature. I've got my two data loggers. This one's going to go inside the chlorifier insulation, and this one's just going to be outside, just monitoring the air temperature in the van. And let's clip it on the chlorifier right by this metal plate. And then I'm going to get some insulation pack that in there on top. One inside the cover and one up here to measure the ambient temperature and they're going to start recording data at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. We've got a starting temperature of 9.5 degrees in the chlorifier. Quick stop for fuel and we're about 20 degrees in the chlorifier now. Coolant 
absolutely everywhere in the back here. I could smell it before I could see it, obviously, because I'm driving. So I've just isolated these. I think it must be the hoses. They got too soft because they're only rated for 60 degrees. So um, I was trying my luck a little bit using those hoses. Yeah, so that, that hose has popped off. And I think that was tight on there, so I don't actually fancy giving it another go. I'm gonna have to rethink this design. Let me give you a brief summary of what happened then. I was driving up the hill. I think maybe the increased pressure of the water pump uh, forced my hose off the chlorifier. I could smell coolant in the cab. I turned around, the van was filling with steam. But I thought, oh dear, that's not good. We need to pull over, carry on driving to try and find the nearest lay-by. You can never find a lay-by if you need one. So I managed to pull over, open the back doors, coolant came flooding out, searched around for my screwdriver to isolate the valves, and I isolated the chlorifier at the back, run to the engine, isolated that. I could see that the coolant bottle was drained, so that's not good. I filled up the engine and carried on my way. That's basically the experiment ruined, so I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board. I think the main issue is the hose that I've used. It's only rated for a maximum temperature of 60 degrees and our engine coolant's around 80 degrees. Um, the hose gets really, really soft. So I think with the increased pressure from the water pump going up that hill, the hose being really soft, um, the Jubilee clip must have just popped off and the hose has come off. I'm gonna be changing the hose to plastic pipe instead. Someone suggested it in the comments. I had thought about using plastic pipe before because I've still got some left over from doing the rest of the van, but I thought hose may be better suited because it's a bit more flexible, it's easier to work with than the plastic pipe. Another thing I wanna do is change my valves for ones with handles on them because in an emergency, you don't wanna be looking around for your screwdriver to isolate the valves. I'd just like to say well done to the person in the comments that suggested that my hose may pop off the copper pipe. You are right. It's got the temperature ranges on here. So at 12 bar, we can have 20 degrees, four bar, 82 degrees, and three bar, 92 degrees. Our engine coolant runs at about 80 degrees, a little bit more, maybe. So it should be fine. We've got a plastic pipe coming through the floor now. A couple of pipe inserts, put them in there. Proper isolation valves, push fit type. So that's gonna go on there. One off, and that one's gonna go. My plan is to use this olive as a stopper to stop the Jubilee clip slipping off of the pipe. So I'm gonna crush that onto this pipe as you would normally. Okay, let's take that off. Once we're happy that it's on the pipe, there we go. So now I'm going to use my pipe cutter to cut this end off up to the olive. So with this olive on the pipe here, when we tighten our Jubilee clip down onto the hose, it will stop the hose from coming off. So I'm going to go with that. That's our plastic pipe connected up to the chlorifier, a couple of handled isolation valves, and I'm using silicon hose instead. This is what I'm gonna be using to tap into the heater matrix. It's a compression tee, but with a built-in isolation valve, so less points of failure. Let's drain the coolant down. Hopefully it's the last time. These were relatively expensive fittings, but they seem to be of good quality. So let's just nip that onto the pipe. I'm using the same method here with an olive bitten onto the pipe up here, so that when we put the hose on and Jubilee clip on here, it's less likely to slip off the pipe because you've got this olive as a stopper. That's our chlorifier filled and vented on the secondary side. We're ready to give it another run. I wanna make sure I've got coolant circulating around the primary pipes. We've got our isolation valves here. 
So yeah, let's go and take it for a little run and just make sure that the temperature rises. So we've got 12.3 degrees in here at the moment. It's back up and running, but we've got a slight leak here where I've tightened up the Jubilee clip so much it's pierced through the silicon hose. So the silicon hose is no good. I'm gonna to have to go and get some proper engine hose. Just dipping the end of this hose in boiling hot water. And then, with a bit of WD-40 on the fitting, I'm just forcing it on. It's stretching on there nicely. I've got some of these red collets for my push fit connectors and they just slide on there. It locks it all in place. Let's set the data loggers up again. Time for test two. We've got a starting temperature of 12.9 degrees. Here we have our upgraded valves in the engine bay. You can see that these hoses on here are really nice and tight with this Jubilee clip. And then we've got our olive back here on the pipe, so it should stop it slipping off. Got a lot more confidence in this, and we've got a compression um, olive on this pipe, the plastic pipe, so it's obviously bitten into the plastic, and then that's tightened down onto here. Same at the back there. Um, we've just got this compression elbow to send it in the right direction and that's all clamped down nicely and to isolate this it's literally a quarter of a turn there and a quarter of a turn back here so nice and easy to isolate now in case we encounter a problem but i'm hoping that should be all right okay it's about 20 past nine so let's start the engine get going so the first stop is petrol station I need to go get some fuel um, and then I need to take some pillows back to Dunhill uh, in the UK that's like a homeware store and we've been driving for 11 minutes now and I'm just coming in to fill up with fuel after 10 minutes we're up to 19 degrees the hose is warm it's not hot it's just warm so that's good this is quite a varied route that I've chosen. We've got a few residential areas where the speed limit's 30 miles an hour. We've got some really steep hills. And if you've ever driven a Smiley Transit, you'll know they do struggle up hills. So the engine's gonna be revving its nuts off. That will force a lot of pressure back to the purifier so we can test it out, make sure the hoses don't pop off like they did last time. I think if the hoses are gonna come off, up this hill. Hopefully not. If I can start to smell cooler or see steam again, we know we're in trouble. our 50 minute drive and we've got 63.6 degrees in the chlorifier lovely and toasty i've exchanged my pillows so i'm gonna head on home now and then once it's home i'm gonna leave it and we'll see how long it stays hot for managed to get 77.6 degrees in the chlorifier which is absolutely amazing really let's give our hoses a little pull test now it's up to temperature yeah that's well and truly on there this time let's take a date logger out that's probably finished recording now and the one for the air temperature i'm going to leave that insulation out because some more work to do on that 
it's a good idea to isolate the chlorifier if you're not planning on using hot water as you'll be heating the chlorifier unnecessarily and that'll take longer for the engine to heat up because it's got to warm through the chlorifier as well as the engine and this means you'll be using more fuel trying to get the engine up to temperature. Let's get our data. Start with that one. And this one is for the ambient temperature. So here we have our two data loggers. The top one shows the air temperature inside the van and the bottom one shows the air temperature within the insulation of the chlorifier. I plotted all the data into an Excel spreadsheet so we can make a graph from this. At the top we've got our time, date, chlorifier temperature and ambient temperature and then I've plotted that together on this graph here. As you can probably work out the red line is our chlorifier temperature or the air temperature within the insulation of the chlorifier so it's slightly lower than the temperatures we were getting on the controller and the green line shows our air temperature within the van. Let's conclude this video with a summary of what we found out then. We have a 19 litre tank of water at over 60 degrees in under an hour's drive, around 45 minutes if you take away my stops for fuel and exchanging my pillows. I think that's pretty reasonable. And we achieved the maximum temperature of 77.6 degrees according to the temperature controller. And that has a sensor attached directly to the top of the cylinder on the metal. We achieved this temperature in under an hour and a half on the road. And I predict the maximum temperature to be over 80 degrees after a longer drive. The engine's thermostat opens at 88 degrees to start cooling the engine. So I expect the temperature to be close to that. So around 80 degrees, something like that. Let's talk about the safety considerations about that then, because 88 degree hot water coming out of the taps is pretty dangerous. It's scalding temperatures, so you've got to be a bit careful. Make sure you've got mixers installed, or alternatively, you could install a mixer directly off of your chlorifier. It blends the cold supply in with the feed out off of the chlorifier. And then that way you can set the temperature going out off of your chlorifier up to the, the taps and the shower mixer. And although our hot water tank is only 19 litres, if you've got 80 degree water mixing with your uh, 70 litre tank of cold water, you're going to have lots of usable hot water for a shower. In the UK, the average shower temperature is around 37 to 40 degrees, something like that. So if you've got 80 degree hot water, you can virtually double, if not triple the amount of um, water at 40 degrees if that makes any sense, because you're blending it with the cold as well. So you've got much more usable hot water than you, you think you have. Um, and after monitoring the temperature over the three and a half days, we still had usable hot water. I class it as usable because it's still warm enough to have a shower from it. It's around 40 degrees. And that was after 24 hours with an outside ambient temperature or an ambient temperature inside the van of 8.4 degrees. We're in the winter here, so um, in the summertime, I expect it to stay warm for a much longer period of time. And most people use their camper vans in the summertime anyway, um, over here. So you're going to have a longer period of time to use that hot water. And I'm looking at incorporating a heating element into the chlorifier as well, which will use any excess solar to top up the water temperature. I may even look at incorporating another element that will run off a hookup. So you've got three methods of heating the water, one from the solar, one from the van's engine and one from hookup. All that's left for me to say is thank you ever so much for watching this video. I hope you found value in this content. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. It's completely free. And if you click the alarm bell, you'll get notifications when I post new videos. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Take care.